Fuck shades, full games, no commentary. Dad? Aren't you sleeping yet? It's time for bed, honey. Dad, I can't sleep. Can you tell me a bedtime story? All right. What do you want to hear? Something... something about an adventure. Hmm. I think I know just the thing. When I was your age, my biggest dream was to follow my Uncle Fred on one of his adventures around the world. One day, he disappeared. I stepped into the lobby of my uncle's house. It lay just across the hill from where I lived with my mother, your grandmother. She had tried to keep me from going, but I wanted to see. See if Fred was home yet from his latest adventure. My uncle used to send me postcards from his long journeys. Greetings from Nepal, Galapagos, Kilimanjaro, the Amazon River. This was the first time he had left without a word, without sending cards. I had visited Uncle Fred's house countless of times, but in the locker, which usually was closed, I found something I hadn't seen before. It was an adventure suit. It resembled the one that Fred used, but smaller in size. Curiosity got the better of me, and I tried it on. It fit like it had been custom made for me. The most mysterious room of my uncle's house was the observatory. There he kept his newest experiments, and right now it held a pad used for disposing of garbage. Uncle Fred had warned me not to touch any of his things. But, as I said, I was a curious child. I landed with a crash, but thanks to the suit I wasn't hurt. I had no idea where the pad had taken me, but back then I didn't care so much about where I was going or how I would get home. The suit protected me from falls on the ground, but not in water. I couldn't swim with this thing on. Best be careful. I was sure that someone had been here before me. Someone had built these bridges and carved these symbols, but who, where were they now? I found a strange gizmo, some sort of measuring tool that Fred must have built. It seemed to be done measuring though, so I took the results to give to Fred. How did you know Fred had been there? Well, I found a small campsite where Fred must have slept before going further into the caves. Mm. I knew it was him because the place was littered with empty packages of his favorite hiking foods. Canned soups, tube food, and instant noodles. Tube food? That sounds gross. Oh well, it's not that bad. Mm. One winter, Uncle Fred and I went hiking into the mountains and we were surprised by a blizzard. We were stuck in a small cabin for two days, and all we ate was tube food and cold canned goulash as well. Your grandmother was worried sick, but I thought it was all very exciting. I 
around and activated the suit's grappling device when I picked it up. It must have been left here by my uncle. The grappling device left a sort of symbol everywhere I grappled. I noticed similar symbols already there in the cave, and I was getting more and more certain that this place was where Fred had gone. The adventure suit was fantastic. By combining a power leap with a grapple, I could fly long distances through the air at great speed.
you ever see any of Fred's experiments yourself? Yes. I actually helped him collect samples for his research sometimes. To learn about them? That's right. We found all sorts of things. One time, we went to the forest and found a small pool of water that was full of eggs. Eggs? Were there chickens in the forest? No, not chicken eggs. These were small and jelly-like. Hundreds of them. Fred told me that they were frog eggs. He was in for a surprise, though. Guess what happened? What? What happened? Well, we took some eggs. Hmm, these blue lights. Did Fred put them here? Or was somebody else here as well? Hello, who are you? You're not from here. Wow, you look just like Fred, but smaller and with less hair on your face. <laughs> she knew Fred. I told her that he was my uncle and that I was looking for him. What's an uncle? I said that he was, that I had known him all my life. Really? Me too. I'll help you find him. I'm Madeline. The others call me Mad Maddie sometimes. I don't know why really, but you can call me Maddie. You've never been to the village, right? Let's meet over there in the square. I'll show you around. I bet you can get there easily with your suit thing. So, I'll see you there. I couldn't believe it. An underground village inhabited by frog people, or more like salamanders. Either way, they, they walked like humans, they talked like humans. How is that possible? Welcome to my village. This is the town square, and that over there is Fred's tent. I haven't seen him in a few days though. Maybe our elder Samuel knows where he is. He knows a lot of stuff. Mostly boring stuff, if you ask me, but it's worth a try. Before asking him though, you should check out the village. It's not so bad, unless you have to stay for too long. When you're done, go to the island with the windmill and you'll see Samuel's cove from there. I'll go on ahead and tell him that you're coming. He's not much for surprises. Later! I thanked Madeline and agreed to meet her later. It was strange. How could I talk to someone who was not even human and still feel like it was perfectly normal? It looked like most of the shacks in the village were built out of trash. Trash from our world. It was, after all, a garbage disposal pad that took me here.
For how long had Fred been gone? I'm not sure. A couple of months, I think. Less than half a year, for sure. I remembered hiking with him the summer before, but when I counted the days in his journals and from when I last saw him, it didn't make sense. Maddie said that she had known him all her life. Maybe she meant it figuratively. Figure... Like, she didn't really mean it. Like, when you say you'll die if you don't get a puppy for your birthday. That's true, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. Of course it is. A stranger in our halls. Welcome. Our name is Samuel, and we will do our best to assist you. Please tell us what brings you here. I told him that I was looking for my Uncle Fred. We should help. Do you know where he is? Fred left us without a word. If you aspire to find him, we can share with you a sacred crystal, a power core. Fred used their kind to power his suit. You can have it if you return our Fred to us. The crystal? Sweet! Madeline, that was inappropriate. Your help will not be necessary. The crystal is not for you to have. What? I want to help finding Fred. Why couldn't I? Please, Madeline, that is impossible. None of us may enter the chasms. It is too dangerous. What's the danger? If Fred can do it, so can I. I say this for your own protection, Madeline. You are forbidden from entering the chasms. Just because you're afraid of what's outside the village doesn't mean I am. I'm nothing like you. I'll never be. We apologize. It is true that we want to keep her safe. But she does not understand. Behind us is the power core. Take it, and go into the chasms. Find Fred, and if you see Madeline, take care of her. Be safe. I felt a little uneasy about moving on into the chasms. If it was too dangerous for Maddie, would it be safe enough for me? Thank you. 
Darkness swept over me as I left the glittering lights in the village behind me and headed for the ominous shadows of the chasms. As I entered the chasms, it struck me how much darker it was in there. The shadows were black as ink, and although I tried not to be afraid, I couldn't help but shiver. Was it the darkness? that frightened the villagers as well, or was it something else? Sorry about back there. I just get so frustrated. They cling so desperately to what they know, won't ever do anything new. It feels better when Fred is around, but... I told Madeline I didn't mind, and I asked her what she was doing with the book. Oh, this? These writings? It's like a secret language. They are done by people who left the village long ago. They're called the Strays, but no one wants to talk about I started translating their language with help from a stray book that Fred found. This one says, Don't move when the eye is open, I think. I wonder what it means. Whatever. We should get going. Why don't you take me on your back? It'll be faster if you carry me. I used to piggyback on Fred all the time. Turn around and I'll hop up. <laughs> You're not going to drop me, right? Okay, let's go. Madeline climbed up on my back, and with the suit on, I could barely feel the extra weight. The winding, narrow tunnels felt like they were closing in on me. They were oddly long and twisting, almost like someone or something had dug them out. With Maddie on my back, I had to be careful not to bump her head on the ceiling. Farewell, old life. Let us start anew. The Straits were ordinary people living in the village long ago. They disagreed with the old traditions and left to form their own village, or they were thrown out for misbehaving. The stories differ a bit. Seemingly bottomless pits loomed below us, everywhere in the cave. The further we got, the more I felt like what faint light existed down there was getting fainter. I was really glad that I wasn't alone. Beware of what? creature sounding as terrifying, and I imagined it wouldn't be happy about visitors.
See that glowing plant over there? I bet something will happen if you used your grapple on it. Told you so. <laughs> It is really dark down there. You're not scared, are you? Cause I'm not. with my people since the first villager was born. He helped us build the village, taught us how to speak, and helps us with everything. He taught me how to read and write as well. That's how I could learn to read the writing on the walls. charge right out in front of that thing. Remember what it said. Don't move when the eye is open. made it through, and I felt like nothing could stand in our way of finding Fred. Oh, another one. This one says, Welcome home. This is where the Strays built their village. And what a beautiful place they chose. Just look at the sky. It is so big. It was a relief to finally feel the sun on my face and a gentle breeze in my hair. After all these caves, just breathing fresh air again was enough to clear my mind of any doubts I might have had about this strange journey so far. Thank you. 
Along my journey I had seen many pieces of floating rock, but here they were much bigger. Some were big enough to fit whole villages. How was this possible? Maybe it had to do with the crystals that seemed to be everywhere. If the legends were true, the stray civilization was younger than the village. Yet, they were making great progress. They invented crystal-powered machines, produced their own fabrics, and built houses out of bricks and stone. It was like a civilization was forming before my eyes. didn't use crystals in the village like that. Didn't they have any? They did have a few, but never used them. The villagers thought the crystals were sacred, that they were the source of life and shouldn't be fiddled with. Wait, didn't Fred use them? For his power cores, yes. I guess he was an exception. The strays, on the other hand, they mined crystals and used... Hey, let's play a game. I bet that you can't get through this part without using the grapple device. With this addition, the suit felt at least 20% cooler. Sweet! Now you gotta try them out. <laughs> this is awesome! It was awesome. I don't know how to describe the feeling of bursting through the air like a bullet so fast that my eyes watered and my belly was full of butterflies, never fully in control, but still feeling like the coolest kid in the universe. <laughs> I guess I just described it, didn't I?
I'd love to do stuff like this with crystals. Just think of the possibilities. Whole machines are powered by them. I almost can't believe it. icy mountain loomed before me, and I felt a chill run down my spine. seen any people around yet, but ahead of us lay what looked like a proper town. The strays from Maddie's stories. I could imagine how she must have longed to meet them all her life. And now, here they were. Be the strays. I want to greet these people myself. Let me off. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi guys, I'm Maddie from the village, and this is my friend. He's looking for Fred. Amazing! I've never seen anyone from inside the caves before. My name is Arvin, this is Ingo, and that's Tamia. Welcome to Star Haven, lads. So, what's it like in the village? Village is okay, but not like this place. We don't have machines and crystals. We're forbidden from using them. Truly. The crystals are our main source of power. The life in the village must be primitive. Or, should I say, simple. Yeah, well, it's not so bad. I've actually made some secret experiments on crystals myself, like this lamp. You made that? Awesome! I couldn't do that even if someone told me how. And with no prior knowledge of how to use them, you are a gifted young lady. I believe we shall find many things to talk about. Actually, I don't know if I can stay that long. Me and my friend are looking for Fred. Have you seen him? Sure. The old man passed through here a few days ago. We taught him how to harness crystal energy. He was headed down to the core of the mountains. You'd have to pass through the ice cave to get there though, so I ain't following. There is a zeppelin headed for the ice cave. It docks a short distance from here. Just follow the path towards the mountain, and you won't miss it. Yeah, good luck. Thanks. Bye, you guys. Over here! Hey! Hey! <clears throat> Those people were so nice. They didn't think we were strange at all, though we came all the way from the village. They were helpful, and they were impressed by something I had done. <sighs> I wish more people in the village were like that. Maddie was silent for a while. It seemed like she was thinking hard on something.
Good day. Here's a bow to Ice King. Though I'd take the other one if I were you. That one goes back to the outpost. Um, I, um, wait a minute. I was thinking. I, I don't know if I should go with you. I mean, I want to, but I also want to, well, stay here. Maybe it's strange, but I just feel like these people liked me and accepted me for who I am. Kind of like you. I want to be with you too and help you find Fred. I don't know what I want the most. I told Madeline that I would accept whatever choice she made. I just never thought about it until now that maybe... Maybe it wasn't Fred I was looking for when I came with you. Maybe I was just looking for a way out. Somewhere to be free. And I know that if anyone can find Fred, it's you. If you meet him, when you meet him, tell him to come see me, okay? I promised. Thank you. I'm glad I met you. And it won't be the same without you around. Goodbye, friend. I said goodbye to Maddie, and I had a feeling that this was the last time I'd see her. But even in this sad moment, I was happy for her. She had found a place where she belonged. There was a dampness in the air that reminded me of the hot summer nights back home. But as the sun was setting, I could feel the chill creeping up on me, and the path we were traveling on seemed to lead us into a second ice age. Winter was coming. Into the caves again, and now it was just me, alone in these cold, barren halls of ice. But Fred had been here, and now I could feel it. I was getting close. Something wasn't right. The grapple device's energy beam was somehow reflected off of the ice, and I couldn't get a grip. I had to look for areas where the ice was not so thick. This was going to be a challenge. crystal I suddenly felt the earth starting to move beneath my feet, and my mind wandered back to how the strays might have used the crystals as a source of power to keep their cities afloat. I decided it was best to hurry back the way I came before this whole room came apart. The crystals also reflected the grapple beam, but as they did, they seemed to recharge the grappling device.
Those floating stones, what were they? I'm not sure. If only Maddie had come with me, maybe she could have translated the scripture on them. But Dad, didn't you learn some of their letters? Well, I had realized that each one of their letters represented one of ours. Maybe I could remember the writings that Maddie read to me in the chasms.
I landed hard and felt the impact vibrate through my body. The suit had protected me, but it was in bad shape. The rocket boots were worst off. The crash had ruined the functionality completely. I knew that if I stayed here to fix them, I would probably freeze to death. I had no other choice than to press on. How could Fred leave stuff behind everywhere? How much was he carrying? As I remember it, Fred wasn't that good at keeping track of all his things. Like you. Hey, it's not like you're any better. Sorry. Anyway, Fred counted on losing a few things on each of his journeys. He always brought more stuff than he needed. For a paddling trip we had, he brought so many life jackets we could barely fit ourselves in the canoes. Isn't it hard to lose track of a life jacket if you're wearing it? Uh, <laughs> good point. I guess he didn't really think of that. I found another one of Fred's campsite, noticeably newer than the others. The fire was still smoldering, and I could faintly pick up the smell of the aftershave he always used. I was closing in on him. I could feel it. He had left some tools behind that I could use to repair my boots. That should do it. Good as new. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
buried beneath the ice, you could still see signs of what this place had once been. Something not unlike the caves where the village lay. The Ice Age must have come suddenly, washing over it like a freezing tsunami. Now it lay desolated, haunting anyone who dared visit with falling stalactites, sharp icicles, and its bottomless depths. Fred had come this way alone, too. I took some comfort in knowing that whatever problems I face now, Fred would have faced them, too. And beaten them. If he could do it, I could do it, too.
It was dark all around me, but there was a light at the end of the tunnel. Hello? Nephew? Uncle Fred, I finally found him. My little boy, I'm glad to see you, and you're wearing the suit I made you. But how can you be here? I said that I found the suit in his workshop, and that I came looking for him. I'm sorry for being away for so long, but I've been busy down here, you see. The frog people, that was an experiment of mine. Do you remember the eggs I found before? I sent them here by accident, and I had to follow. By the time I got here, they were already growing. These caves were empty before, but my experiment has made them full of life. I have conducted research on them and documented everything about them. And I built a new crystal-powered pad to be able to get back to my colleagues, show them how fantastic this all is. I interrupted Fred and told him about Maddie, how we came all the way to Starhaven together, and that I had promised to ask him if he would go see her there. Madeline, my little Maddie. I, I should have taken her to see Starhaven long ago. She was always so curious about the strays. When I left her, I wanted to protect her. Or rather, protect myself from losing her. I have changed my mind. I'm not going home. What does research or praise matter when I can be here with these creatures? They need me. And it's just as well. I don't trust this pad for more than one ride anyway. You need that ride. I didn't want to go home. And I asked if I could stay with him and Maddie instead. I'm sorry, nephew. As much as I enjoy having you here, you must go home. Explore the world on your own. Have your own adventures. I reluctantly agreed to go home. I was going to miss my uncle. I will miss you too. But I'm sure you'll do phenomenal on your own. And don't worry about me or Maddie. We'll be fine. The pad is yours, boy. When you're ready.
the end. Now, good night, sweetie. Wait, Dad. Does that mean Fred is still there? Who knows? That was the last time I saw him. Don't you miss him? I do, sometimes. But I don't worry about him. Because I know that wherever he is, he's on his biggest adventure yet. Dear Fred, today I step into the lobby of your house for the last time. My daughter asked me to tell her about an adventure, and I came to think of you. Your house looks just like my mother and I left it years ago. After you'd gone, I was sure she was going to throw out all your stuff, but she just cleaned up. We made you a small memorial. For a while, I came here every day, just like I used to. Sometimes, I could even faintly hear your voice calling from the observatory, asking me to get you this tool or that. I never told my mother about that day. I don't think she would have believed me. Can I believe it? After all these years. Uncle Fred, thanks to you, I have found an even greater adventure. Thank you. Love, your nephew. <laughs>